What I'd like to think about is if we had a loudspeaker that was emitting a sound wave, perhaps of a constant frequency and a constant loudness, we might get a, a picture of the sound waves that looks like this as they spread out and they spread out. Now perhaps we might think, well that's, that's all very good, but what would happen if we had two speakers playing exactly the same note at the same volume? Well what we'd get then is another set of waves being emitted by the second speaker. And what we have over here is a lovely pattern as, as these things fan out. And what we have are points where we have constructive interference and destructive interference. What would that sound like? Well, if we had uh, somebody moving along, as they moved along, they'd hear periods uh, or points where it is loud and then quiet, then loud, then quiet, then loud, then quiet. And we can look at this both with thinking about sound waves and what that might sound like, and also using microwaves. This setup shows the microwave transmitter uh, and what it's doing is it's passing the wave through a double slit. Now this time, uh, the gap of each of these slits is about approximately equal to the wavelength, about 2.8 centimetres. And when I use my micro uh, receiver, and as I move it along, there's a small spike, then it decreases. In the middle, there's a maximum, decreases. And again, we have a series of microwaves that are interfering as they go through that gap. So far we've looked at two sources of interference, both with sound waves where you might hear loud and quiet points and also using microwaves that we can demonstrate in the lab. Now the app here that I've used a couple of times before, this uh, Ripple Free, we can show that using maybe this plain wave front hitting a small gap where there are two slits. And as we see, as a wave goes through it uh, diffracts and spreads out and it's the uh, interference between the two waves that are diffracting that give us points where they, the waves cancel each other out and we have destructive interference and other points where the two waves tend to uh, add together and we have constructive interference. But if we can do this with microwaves and we can see what happens to all waves, what happens if we fire light at this? That's what the next video in the link below is all about.